along for the ride. Joins us every Friday to talk a little Missouri football. Good morning, Howard Richards. Good morning, McGraw. Good morning, Kelly. It is the 105th edition of Homecoming at Missouri, and I believe, didn't Missouri invent Homecoming? Well, I wasn't there back then, but that's what they say. <laughs> R- rumors have it. No, you were busy mowing your your, your yard that exactly. day. Yeah, yeah. You, and fertilizer. Right. Yeah, you, didn't, you didn't realize how much fun homecoming could actually be. Um, so Middle Tennessee State comes in. Boy, uh, you're, the Tigers need a uh, victory in the worst way after the last couple of weeks. No doubt. They've been um, blown out of the last two games, both on the road. But So it's time to – to return home uh, to friendlier confines. Uh, but they're facing a team in Middle Tennessee State that is uh, no slouch. I mean, it's the number five passing team uh, in the country. Uh, the quarterback, Brent Stockstill, is a guy that Barry Odom recruited uh, to play quarterback when uh, Barry was at Memphis. Uh, but he chose instead to go join his father, Rick Stockstill, who's the head coach there. Uh, but it's a, it's a game with uh, – that's, that's one of the backstories. The other backstories with the Missouri offensive line coach, Glenn Ellerby. Um, uh, Middle Tennessee State is his alma mater, and he also coached there. So this game has a lot of meaning uh, for both Barry and for, uh, for Glenn. They want to come out and, and uh, get off to a fast start and play well in front of a homecoming crowd. Yeah. So the offense – let's talk a little offense for uh, Missouri because it started off pretty well, and it actually had a nice game against Georgia early on. And then – the last two weeks, it sort of sputtered. So I guess that's – you can't win if you can't score. You know, I think that um, – I think maybe the team and maybe some of us had uh, some sort of false hopes after the way the Tigers performed uh, against the likes of Eastern Michigan and Delaware State. Uh, clearly, the level of competition in those games was not very good. Um, and, and we may have seen some things. Of course, the Tigers were supposed to win those games. But uh, they have struggled outside of Georgia against um, F, uh, excuse me, SEC competition. So this is a time that uh, uh, they've got to get better. And, and let's just face it, there have been uh, mistakes. Uh, Drew Locke has not been as sharp as he was early on. He's missed some throws. But his receivers haven't helped him either. They have, they've dropped a lot of passes. Uh, the best part about the offense has really been uh, the offensive line. Um, the running game seemingly has life, and they rush for uh, against a stout Florida defense. They rush for 265 yards. So I believe going forward, uh, their offensive success will will really thrive if if they start to run the ball much more and and try to establish and beat teams um, uh, with their big offensive line up front. Yeah, Missouri's 0 three in the SEC. But their schedule gets a lot easier. I mean, look, let's face it, going to LSU in Florida, that's a tough gauntlet to go through. The, the, the schedule does loosen up a little bit here in the second half. It is favorable. This uh, next block of four games, is, it's pivotal for Missouri. Obviously, they're, they're, uh, they certainly can't win a uh, division championship, but they can, can qualify for uh, a bowl game if they win six. And, and if you, this next block of four, if you win these four, then you have become bowl eligible. Um, but in order to do that, it's not a gimme. They've got to play well in all these games. And, uh, you know, the, the fourth of the four is Vanderbilt, who early in the season a lot of people just looked at it as, as, a, as a win on the schedule. But Vanderbilt's defense is very, very good. And, um, um, it, again, not a gimme game. So uh, you've got to play. You get, they've got to take them one by one. You can't look too far ahead. You've got to start here with um, – Middle Tennessee State on Saturday and uh, win that one and then uh, let the chips fall where they may going forward. Are they doing anything special for homecoming? Do they have those goofy uniforms again for this year or something? You know, I don't know. I haven't seen what they're wearing this this week, Um, but I have advocated and uh, I may have to start a little campaign on this one uh, to use a throwback uniform for homecoming. You know, the traditional yes. old gold pants, you know, block M on the helmet. Um, and I've talked to Jim Stark about this, and he, he seemed to be somewhat excited. A lot of people want to do this. So don't be surprised if next year you see these uh, traditional Missouri football uniforms. And if they do that, remember where you heard it first. I'm with you. Go, <laughs> go the other way. Go backwards. Don't go forwards. These new... Uh, color flash, flash forward, whatever they got, uniforms, 
They're so terrible, and they're so – college football – what's great about college football is the, the tradition and the pageantry. Don't ruin that with these weird uniforms they're coming out with. Well, you, it, this is all the money they get from uh, their marketing partners, uh, Nike in particular, right. uh, is just too much to turn down. So, um, you know, it is, it's a trend in college football, much like uh, facilities. I mean, kids right. go to schools because of great facilities outside of winning traditions and what they're going to look like on Saturday. So the only way I want to go, go backwards, as you mentioned, is uh, on homecoming wearing a, a traditional uniform. That's the only time I ever think about going back. Howard Richards, what time does the game start uh, tomorrow? 3 p.m. 3.01 p.m. exactly. 3.01 p.m. Heard here on the Big 550 KTRS. Voice of the Tigers, Howard Richards. Have a good call, Howard. Talk to you next week. Thanks, guys. Take care. You got it. Good man, Howard Richards. Mizzou Tigers on the Big 550.